welcome back to another episode of Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. On this week's episode, we're going to talk all about leopard gecko breeding. Now, the basics of leopard gecko breeding are very simple. What I love about leopard geckos is they're easy to keep and they're easy to pair and the incubation of the eggs once they uh, pop out are, is really easy as well. And then once the babies have hatched, make sure that they're well fed and they have a place to go that's humid because stuck sheds is the number one problem that I've found with baby leopard geckos if you keep them in a reptile room that is heated by a furnace or near a furnace room like mine is here. So let's go through all of that and let's start with how big your leopard geckos have to be to breed. Well, 45 grams is the general rule. That's when you know that they are sexually mature. So now you've got yourself a couple 45 gram or larger sexually mature leopard geckos. What's next? Well, make sure they're well fed, make sure that they're healthy, make sure that they're having no shed problems, and they've got a big fat tail. Once you've done all that, just pair them. Uh, a lot of leopard gecko breeders will cool them off or light cycle them or whatever. In this room, I do light cycle my ball pythons and my hognose the same. So I just change the light cycle so shorter days. Uh, and longer nights, so maybe it affects the leopard geckos, but I don't do it on purpose. It just kind of happens because of the room that they're in. So the next step is, once you've paired them, you stick, I stick the male into the female enclosure. Uh, you leave them there for a couple days. Now a lot of people will say, make sure they're always supervised, and I'd suggest your first season, especially at the beginning, supervise them. Make sure that the male isn't being super rough with the female. Uh, I've done this for a number of years with the same males and females. Uh, to know that my male isn't going to rip them to pieces and I've never heard of anybody having this issue before. So what I do is I stick the male in with females and I close the tub and I walk away. I'll come and check on them, especially at the beginning of the season, but generally I take the male out after two or three days. I'll put him back, make sure he's well fed for a day or two, put him with the next female and I repeat the cycle. So each female gets the male for three days once every nine or ten days so basically she's got seven days or seven or eight days or so by herself six to eight yeah you, you whatever you, you can figure out the math so the, the idea is make sure that she has a little bit of a break and then continue putting the male in there until you know that she's gravid um, or until there's eggs the thing is you don't want a male in there when she's laying her eggs because that can cause problems um, too many to list but I generally don't do this, it just seems safer to me to make sure the male is not with the female. And once the female has laid eggs, uh, the, the idea is you put the, the male back in with her, make sure that she still uh, has fertile eggs inside of her, she still has the sperm to fertilize her eggs. And generally, leopard geckos, they're gonna put between 8 and 20 eggs. 8 is more common than 20. Last season I got 16 out of one of my females, um, and I got 15 out of the other. So I had pretty big clutches and generally they'll have the first year it'll be less and then a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Year four or five they'll top out and then it'll start to decrease. So each of my females is on their third year. So this will be my third year. So this should be the highest production year or next year maybe. Um, but they're still very young. The male, however, is eight. He's a ripe old man, but he is more than happy to donate his seed to the females. So that was pretty fast, right? Now you've got yourself some eggs. What do you do? Well, step one, make sure that your incubator is turned on. The incubator has to be ready to go when the eggs arrive. You can't kind of scramble at the last minute. It's really unsafe to do. It's just not what you want. And what's it look like when you have eggs? Well, how convenient. Let me show you. So you have your container. This is what I use, just a hole cut into a sandwich container, basically. And uh, every few days, or every day, really, you should, Take the lid off, and then you're left with the substrate. And sometimes you'll see it's all pushed to one side. Generally, my females, for, or all my leopard geckos, for whatever reason, um, they always usually push the dirt to the side without the hole. So you'll, you won't see, in normal uh, months, the substrate coming out of the hole. However, once I start seeing the substrate being moved out of the hole, it's being kicked out, generally that means they've laid their eggs in that side, and they're trying to cover them up. Make sure that your substrate is moist, otherwise your eggs will dry out and you're going to have a bad time. So, here's your eggs, and there's what they look like, right there. Here, I'm going to get real close for you. So they should show up kind of like this, nice and round. The nice thing with leopard gecko eggs, 
is that you don't have to keep them upright like a snake egg. So you don't worry, I have to, I always do keep them up. Um, so what I would do is I would take the eggs. Now I've only found one, which is why I started, I decided to do this video this week. So I'm gonna look for the other egg. Usually they're pretty close together and there it is. Now these eggs, you'll notice uh, where I just showed you up close that they're nice and white and they're, they kind of feel a little bit dented. So they're a little bit dry, I imagine. So here's what you do with the eggs once they come into the substrate. Now what you should do is you should get yourself an incubation medium. Make sure it's ready to go before the eggs arrive. Um, perlite or vermiculite is great. There's other ready-made uh, products like Hatchrite. You see that on other channels. But what I use, I just use perlite because it's five bucks for a giant bag. And you, this is a hobby for most of us. So unless you're making a bunch of money, I mean, try to keep the cost as low as possible. And then you take that and you put your uh, vermiculite or perlite or whatever, and you put it into a container uh, with a lid. Make sure that the lid does not have any holes in it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna go uh, twice a week or once a week and just open it up and do a little bit of air exchange, let the air kind of come in. Uh, make sure it's nice and moist. And here's how you make sure that it's not too moist. Well, before we do that, I'll show you how I do it. I do something a little bit different. Um, instead of putting my eggs right into the incubation medium, making a little dent and putting an egg in the incubation medium, I use these little trays. So if you can see, yeah, this is a pretty good shot. Um, they're actually made for eight leopard gecko eggs at a time, and you'll notice that uh, they're kind of grooved out. So they're made for them, and it's ventilated, very well ventilated, so the humidity uh, can get right up through there, and the eggs aren't actually sitting in a medium, which sometimes, if you're not careful, can cause moldy eggs, or eggs to dry out, I guess, but that would happen with this too, if your incubation medium is not dry enough, or not wet enough, sorry, not moist enough. So what I do is I take this and I put it on top of the incubation medium in a deli cup. So let's put the incubation medium inside of a deli cup. And if you're wondering, this is Perlite. Uh, I think I got this for five bucks at Home Hardware, which, or like Home Depot is the same thing. It's just we have a Canadian brand here, Canada, go figure. So I'm gonna take some of this and stick it in some of this and I'll be back in two seconds. So now I've got my fresh Perlite inside of a deli cup. This is, I believe, a six ounce deli cup. If I'm wrong, I'll change it right here. Um, what I do is I take the incubation substrate and I wanna make sure that it is correctly moistened. And the way that you do that, you can do this a bunch of different ways. Um, the easiest way is to pour a bunch of water into it, put your hand over it, and once it stops dripping, once you can pick up a clump and it no longer drips out of your hand, you know it's good to go. Now what I do is I grab a mist bottle that I'd use to mist my enclosures and I just do that until it is ready to go. So let's do that. So now I've got the incubation substrate, the incubation medium ready to go. So I'm gonna plop my insert in So what I did is I actually have too much of the medium inside here. So I'll just dump some of it in the garbage and I will make sure that it is packed down nice, not too packed, but just enough where the template or the insert, whatever you want to call it, sits in there nice and snug. All right. And there you have it. So everything is in there the way that it should be. Now I'm gonna take these eggs and I'm gonna stick these eggs into the slots here. Now if your eggs have a little bit of dirt still on them or substrate, don't worry about it. It's not gonna harm them. I don't wash them off. I don't, I don't, I don't know if it's good or bad to wash them off, um, but they've always hatched. I've never had an egg not hatch or go bad. Uh, just leaving them the way that they are. So I'm just gonna continue leaving them the way that they are. So now you're ready to go. Your eggs are in there. So what I do to make sure that I never get the eggs confused, because I've got a couple different leopard gecko uh, females, so I don't want to forget which egg came from which female. So here's how I do that. I get my lid and I get my container and I put a black mark so that they line up. 
So the black, and I just use a, a Sharpie for this. So the lid fits on snug, there's no holes in the lid, it's airtight, it is good to go. So I take the little black mark, I mark the lid, and then I mark the actual container too. So that way it sits in and you always know whose is whose. And then you just mark on the top the name or however you want to mark it so you know which leopard gecko laid these leopard gecko eggs. And then you stick them in your incubator. Now, something about the incubator I forgot to mention. Make sure it's the right temperature. So what do I mean by right temperature? Well, leopard geckos are temperature sex determinant, which is very interesting, which means that if you incubate them at a certain temperature, they'll be boys, at another temperature, they'll be males, and in the middle, you'll get a mix of two. Or if you go way on the hot end, bad news, you're gonna get what's called hot females, very aggressive females. So the temperatures um, are as follows. So the guidelines are like this. Um, if you do about 80 to 83, you're gonna get females, 100% females. If you wanna go uh, males, between uh, 86 to 88, you're gonna get all, uh, sorry, half and half. You're gonna get half and half, half males, half females. And if you go 89 or 90 to 98, then you're gonna get all males. Now, if you want very aggressive females, just put them about 100 and you'll get some real aggressive females. And also they'll be infertile, by the way. So they're not good as a pet, and they're not good as a breeder. They're just angry. And uh, if you want a guard leopard gecko, that's the way to go. So what I do is I incubate mine at 83 degrees because I want females. That's what I want. Um, and I might, for the last clutch, put them in a different incubator and make them a half and half or make them males because I do need one more male. So this year I might make some males. But the nice thing is you can choose if you want males or females with basically 100% accuracy. Every female I've wanted to be female has been female so far. I guess a question that I would have asked myself and I should address, how long from copulation to laying the eggs? Well, 16 to 22 days. And then after that, uh, after the lay eggs again, generally every 16 to 22 days, you're gonna get another clutch. So about two and a half to three weeks, generally. The last year, I think my, I averaged about 18 or 19 days in between. And I started pairing these guys 0129, and today is 0221. So basically, yeah, three weeks is how long it took. So, and I continued pairing them. So then now, you've got your little package here with your eggs, and you wanna stick it in your incubator. That's all you do. <laughs> And then you go and you change once a week, so you can pick a day of the week. Um, for me, it's Saturdays in the morning. That's when I do most of my reptile work. I'll come down, I'll change the air, I'll check for eggs, everything I do down here, clean the whole bit, uh, feed the snakes. But that, in a nutshell, is how you breed leopard geckos. And now, once they hatch, we'll do a video about that, and that's gonna be in some time now. 35 to 89 days, basically, is what you're gonna see everywhere on the internet. Um, for me, I incubate kind of lower, so it takes a little bit longer. I think 69 days is where I averaged last year. So it just depends on the temperature. If you incubate them hot, then quicker. If you incubate them cooler, then it's gonna take a little bit longer. So that is generally um, how, in a nutshell, to breed leopard gecko. So I hope you really enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, put them down in the description. I love answering questions. And of course, until next week's episode, I would love to have your suggestions. What do you want me to talk about? What's the next video supposed to be about? What do you want to see? Uh, you know, we're all here to learn about leopard geckos and other animals, all sorts of different reptiles and amphibians together. I'm no expert. I'm just a dummy with a bunch of animals. and. Until next week, it's been Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. I'll see you on Monday.